Back to On the Market on 105.9 The Region. Welcome back to On the Market, York Region's exclusive radio real estate show on 105.9 The Region. I'm Tina Cortez, and of course, our co-host is Asif Khan from Remax Prime Properties. And Asif, you have our next guest. Hey, you, Tina. It's Shale Rothman, Managing Partner of RealEstateLawyers.ca. Shale, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Shale, I know the market's been heating up, but you guys seem to be a lot busier than uh, than at any time because there's a, a lot of different emotions going through uh, buyers' mindsets and and you're trying to close deals that uh, took place a few months ago. What's the general feel, and, and what are you seeing out there right now? Um, issues that have come across our desk recently are for deals that were closing January, February, March uh, that were completed, but now the official closing date are taking place now. Appraisals are coming in, um, not all the time, but the occasional time, uh, depending on the location and how much the buyer has paid for that purchase, uh, they're coming in a little bit low. The the banks are lending based on the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever one is less. So if you ended up purchasing for a million dollars, but it appraised at 900000 you need to come up with that $100,000 somewhere, whether it be private financing, savings, etc., so now you end up having situations where buyers potentially could have buyer's remorse, trying to get sellers to reduce their purchase price, trying to come up families and friends to come up with additional money. So that's where we come in in order to try to bridge that gap, try to give proper advice in order to ensure that deals don't fall off the rails and still close. But buyers are still looking at, oh, Bank of Canada raising rates that affects mortgage rates is now a good time to buy. Can I get out of a real estate transaction, even though it's a firm and binding deal? So there's a few steps that we can discuss in order to try to avoid those for future deals. So can you walk us through some of those steps? For sure. So again, we see a lot just with the volume that comes through my office. Um, So there's certain steps that I would recommend when dealing with a real estate transaction moving forward in the environment that we're looking at. Uh, Number one, the biggest thing is the purchase price. So work with a, an experienced real estate agent that can do comparables and understands what the market is, is shifting in that specific location. You can't just look at Canada and say, okay, well, that applies to every single location. It even goes down to the micro level of the street. So make sure that you're not overpaying, number one, for the actual property itself, and make sure that you have a finance clause for that is conditional upon financing in your agreement of purchase and sale. Even if you're in multiple offers, I strongly recommend that financing clause, submitting it to the bank and making sure that they appraise the property and approve you for that specific transaction. A lot of issues that people have is that they get approved for a mortgage for a specific dollar amount, but they fail to realize that that doesn't mean that the bank has approved that specific property. So you can be approved to go shopping for a million dollar property, but if that appraisal comes in, for 900000 the bank is not going to lend you the million dollars. They're going to lend based on 900000 So make sure that the pre-approval is subject to that property and that you get the bank to sign off in writing. Do not accept a verbal for it. Um, if you can do that, that's the number one key, especially for a buyer as well as a seller. So if you want to sleep, it's great having the highest price that's out there, but it's the best value proposition for a deal. It doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form if you're relying on a transaction and you're supposed to be getting a certain dollar amount only to find out a month later that the buyer cannot close and that affects your own purchase that you're relying upon. So I really recommend that a finance clause is there and that it's actually been approved. Uh, The next thing that would be really important for um, any buyer or seller for that matter is closing the gap of the, the actual closing date. So if you're purchasing today, and you're moving forward, try to have the closing within a month if possible. The further out that you push your closing date, so let's say 90 days, you have a little less control in terms of Bank of Canada, interest rates moving up, shifts in market, et cetera. You want to minimize the gap between um, the time that you execute the agreement and your closing date to try to have a little bit more control on your external environment of what is happening. Okay? The other scenarios are is that when you're dealing with your interest rates and all that jazz, just trying to protect yourself from um, the actual rates and the exposure of where things are going, start working with your team. Make sure you have a really good 
a real estate agent, work with a mortgage broker that understands the environment in order to run the numbers for your options, um, and try to do things early. If you can do all that before you even go shopping and you understand the environment you're in, you understand the rates, et cetera, you can make more informed decisions. Uh, a lot of times when things go sideways, it's clients who are rushing to be put into multiple offers and they're pulling the trigger on a transaction where they feel the pressure and they feel like they have to make that decision immediately as opposed to understanding um, all the different options. Um, trying to rush things is when mistakes happen. So try to do things early and be proactive in whatever you're doing.